What's going on guys, my name is Koops, and this is the second video of my Jevil Cosplay series over on Koopa Cosplay. Again, if you are interested, I'll leave a link to everything I've been posting down below. It has all of my cool cosplay progress from all of the costumes that I'm doing. So, if you want to keep up with everything that I do on the cosplay side of things, then go over to that channel. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the shorts tutorial for Jevil. What's going on guys, my name is Koop and welcome back to another video here on Koopa Cosplay where I show you how to make your favorite characters from head to toe. And in this video, I am going to show you guys how I made my Jevil Cosplay shorts or how I made my cosplay shorts for Jevil. I don't, I'm just getting mixed up at this point. Uh, how I made my shorts for my Jevil cosplay and basically how to take any pair of pants and turn them into an awesome garment for your cosplay. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this tutorial. So the first thing you want to do is grab a pair of pants, the fabric you want to use, and some tailor's chalk. For those of you that are wondering, I'm using Fabric Wholesale Direct's black twill for these shorts. Is it the most period appropriate material? No, but does it look professional? Heck yeah, it does. Fold your fabric into four pieces, then trace your pants to about how long you want your shorts to be. Measure out a length of fabric. For me, this ended up being about six inches and add that to the hip side of the pants. Trace this to the fabric and cut out the shape with about half an inch around the shape. Since you folded it, you should have four equal pieces once all of them are cut out. Now take the two front halves that we cut out that are at the top of those four shapes that we cut out and we're going to sew them together along the inside leg. Don't sew the top curved portion, we're just going to sew the straight portion of the leg. Then use a zigzag stitch on that exact edge afterwards to keep the edges from fraying. If you have a serger, you can use that, but I don't so here we are. Now sew together the outside edge, but we're going to keep a little bit of the bottom of the seam unsewn for now. Flip the unfinished side edges on the inside and sew them and now flip it again and repeat the same process. Now get the other two pieces that we cut out earlier and repeat the same steps to make the other side. Sew the two pieces together of the one side that we did not sew up. At the time of me recording this clip, I didn't know what closure I wanted to attach to the pants, so I left the front unsewn. For now, let's move on to the leg closures. So first off, off camera, I used a zigzag stitch to seal the waist and the legs, but aside from that, we are going to go ahead and gather up our openings that we have for the legs and the waist. You can use a sewing machine to gather the edges, but I just find hand sewing gathers to be much easier. The only difference is that it takes longer, but uses less steps. To gather the legs, we're going to use a simple running stitch around the bottom. We want to sew close to the edge, but not exactly on the edge. After sewing the stitch all the way around the leg, put in your pants and pull the thread. Make sure that the hemmed edges that we sewed are pinned together so that the pants come together where they're supposed to be attached. And then secure the stitch by sewing it back into the fabric and going through the loop created by the thread. We'll do the same thing to the other leg and eventually to the waist as well. Next, measure around the area of the leg you want the pants to fall. Cut a rectangle fabric 
the measurement around your leg plus two to three inches or so by three inches and add some seam allowance. Now fold the rectangle in half and fold the top edges over and iron everything in place. Now position the cuff on the leg with pins. The end of the cuff should be about one inch longer than the edge of the fabric, so keep that in mind. Top stitch the cuffs with a straight stitch and sew as closely to the edge as possible. Afterwards, you're going to make a buttonhole on the back side and sew a button on the front side and repeat the same steps for the other leg and cuff. Now back to the closure. I decided to use an invisible zipper which as the name suggests gives a zipper closure while hiding the zipper. After sewing up the remaining groin seam, I opened up the package and followed the instructions inside. After I prepped the zipper, I pinned it to the almost finished seam and attached it to the shorts using a back stitch because it didn't have a zipper foot at the time. Now time to make the waistband. Measure your waist and cut out another rectangle. This time the dimensions should be your waist measurement plus two inches by four inches plus a little bit of seam allowance. After you've done that, you can pin it to the waist and sew it in place with a top stitch. The fabric should line up with the left side of the pants. After you've sewn in the waistband via top stitch, sew whatever closure you want at the top. I chose to sew in a snap in the middle. If you're sewing in a snap in the middle like me, you can sew through the top layer of fabric without sewing through the back layer. This will avoid any noticeable threads peeking through the front. Once you've sewn the closure, you can pretty much stop here and you'll have a pair of shorts that you can use for Jevil. This next step is up to personal preference, but I decided to make suspenders. Since in the game, this model has two black bars on his shirt that I interpreted to be suspenders. From the back of the waistband, measure around two inches from the middle over your shoulders and where you want the suspenders to end. Oh, and mark those points with tailor shock as well. That will come in handy later. Cut out two rectangles three inches by the measurement you just took, plus some seam allowance. Now fold those rectangles in half and sew up the long side with both a zigzag stitch on the edge and a straight stitch on the line that you made. I flipped the rectangle inside out and zigzagged the unfinished edges at the top and bottom. In hindsight, I probably should have sewn one end first, flipped it inside out, and then closed the other end with a ladder stitch, but no one will see the ends, so it's okay. Now sew buttonholes onto all of the ends and you should have your suspender straps. All we have to do now is sew four buttons to the inside of the waistband. Use the marks that you made on the band when measuring to position the buttons in place. And then you're going to sew them in place. And remember, only sew through the front layer to avoid those noticeable threads. Finally, slip the buttons through the holes on the suspenders and you're finished. You have a completely cool pair of shorts that you can use for your Jevil cosplay. If you like this tutorial and want to see more tutorials from me, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and also turn notifications to stay up to date with my posts and stay up to date with all the cosplay madness that goes on on my channel. And until next time, I have been Coops, you have been awesome, take care, and goodbye.